Very good. You're live. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to our Tennessee Tree Day webinar. And my name is Jeffrey Berry. I am the CEO of Tennessee Environmental Council. Uh, we have a cool little presentation here for you today. That should go about a half hour and we're going to open it up for some Q&A. Um, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to type it in the chat if you're on the Zoom. And if you're watching this on Facebook Live, you can type your questions in the comments and we have someone who will moderate those. And, and at the end of the presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. And I'm going to introduce everybody a, a little bit later during the presentation, but I definitely want to uh, give you a chance to wave hello. We got Cynthia Hernandez, who is our Tennessee Tree Program Manager, and Gina Satters, who's the East Tennessee Nursery Manager. Uh, so um, everybody has some expertise and information and really cool tidbits they're going to share with you during this presentation. So um, thank you for being here with us today. It's an honor and a privilege to be part of an organization that is doing a statewide event every year to add uh, to Tennessee's magnificent tree canopy and to have fun in the process and to involve lots of volunteers like you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I have a, a short presentation with some slides I'm gonna show um, and walk through with you. So this webinar is all about Tennessee Tree Day. Minimize that. And uh, here's one of our uh, volunteer pickup site leaders from last year. All of our, everybody you see in this project out there in the communities are volunteers. So make sure you thank them for their, their part of making this a success. Um, let's see. Ta -da. So Tennessee Environmental Council, just a brief background about our organization. We are a nonprofit organization. We were founded, so we're a private organization founded in 1970 with a mission to engage individuals and communities to improve our environment and public health. Our vision is a Tennessee where people and nature thrive in harmony. And we work to achieve on a daily basis. We have a wonderful staff that is doing work every day to figure out how we're gonna improve our environment with three key priorities. One is thriving habitats, two is a circular economy, and three is climate balance. And we have different programs within our organization and events and activities and webinars like this that all contribute to those three key aspirations. By the way, anything I share with you today on this webinar, you can learn on our website, tectn.org, but you will have a chance to see that uh, throughout the presentation. But one of our, uh, key programs and has been since 2007 is the Tennessee Tree Program. And the goal when it was established was to plant 1 million trees, uh, native Tennessee trees, and to care for those trees. And it wasn't that we were going to go out and plant all these trees, but we were going to facilitate the tree planting and call upon volunteers like yourself to get that job done in the local communities. So, and to engage 50,000 Tennesseans in that effort. And why? Because we want to instill the value of urban and rural trees and forests in our community. It's a big part of who we are in Tennessee, as you all know. And to provide education on how to plant and care for trees, native trees in particular. And, and that's, we only um, work with native trees, trees that are native to this region um, that are custom to our environment. And that, um, so we're not in, introducing exotic or invasive species in these efforts. And so what is Tennessee Tree Day? Well, it's a part of the Tennessee Tree Program. Uh, and it's something we came up with about five years ago as a way to take the tree program statewide and get people involved all across Tennessee, every corner of Tennessee. And so it's been an annual event since 2016. And we organized the whole thing, our staff. And it is the largest tree planting event of its kind in America with thousands of volunteers, uh, all on a community level. It is the day when Tennessee residents will collectively pick up and plant more than 50,000 native tree seedings in all 95 counties. And that's coming up in just a few days. But it wouldn't be able to happen without you and your participation, the thousands of volunteers, our pickup site leaders, 
the nursery manager, the nursery operations, the division of forestry, which is a key partner and lots of uh, partners and sponsors that make it possible and all the donors and folks that donate to pick up trees and reserve trees. And so I wanna just take a second and introduce uh, Cynthia Hernandez because she is the Tennessee Tree Program Manager. But, and I, I will put you on the spot here and there, Cynthia. Uh, is there anything you wanna to add to what I've said so far? Uh, let me make sure I can. Uh, I'm just excited to be a part of this um, tremendous event. And yep, ready to go. You are. And by the way, uh, Cynthia is very, is very, is modest. And uh, she is the one who writes the grants and seeks the sponsors and the partners and sets the whole thing up, all the logistics um, to recruit all the local volunteers, the site leaders, working with the nursery, making sure, selecting the trees and the species and making sure we have the right mix for you and working with Gina over there and placing the orders. And so thank you, Cynthia, for your incredible contributions to make this event happen. It's just phenomenal. So thank you so much. You are a superhero. I'm gonna share my screen again. You're welcome. It's a privilege and honor to work with you and all of our amazing partners. I'm going to go back to the presentation. So how does Tennessee Tree Day work? And by the way, Cynthia, you can interrupt me anytime. Um, if there's something you uh, want to elaborate upon that I might be speeding the past, then feel free to shout it out. I'm going to keep you in the corner over here <laughs> on my screen. But so how does it work? So the first thing you know, that Cynthia is well, um, very, very well familiar with is that we, we start writing grants grant applications uh, to secure the funding to make this happen and securing sponsors, um, financial sponsors to support the event. And so that happens about a year in advance. And we do that almost the whole year round is raise the resources to make this event happen. The summer before the event, so coming up this summer, we're gonna be planning the 2022 event. Uh, when we are selecting the native tree species that are available from the nurseries that we can order, and we actually place, we put the down payment, we, we place those orders and we commit to those, that number of trees. And so we hope we'll hit the 50,000 every year, um, but we never know for sure if we're gonna do that. Uh, it, there's a lot of guess, guessing that goes on and we make our best guess and do the best to, to make it successful. And then we spend months uh, inviting people in local communities to serve as pickup locations, to serve as regional hubs. And I'll explain those uh, a little bit and to recruit the volunteers like yourself that are gonna actually plant the trees. That's how this all happens. I would like to mention, um, I'm not the only grant writer here. We have a great team. Um, there's about five of us that write grants. We also have interns that help us and they are instrumental in helping us complete all of our work. Um, this year, I wanted to brag a little bit. Uh, we have 90, um, counties with pickup sites. So that's more than ever before. We're only missing five um, out of 95. We have 90. So yeah, yeah absolutely. a great success. And, and you, you made it happen, Cynthia. And all you who sign up and hear about this, this effort and agree to participate in any, any level are part of that whole success story. But thank you, Cynthia, for always honoring the people that are part of this effort. So once we set up all, in this year we have 112 tree distribution networks in 90 counties, like Cynthia said. And once we have all those set up, then we can open up the tree registration. By the way, we also do press releases and lots of other ways to publicize, just to make sure people know that this is going on and we alert the media. Um, we do run some ads. We do a lot of Facebook advertising as many of you are aware. It's an incredible way to reach the communities where we have those distribution centers set up. By the way, those are all volunteer run. So there's 112 of those. And we have a number of other municipal partners that are um, doing tree events in their communities as well. And so we finalize the order, we pay for the trees, we um, lock them in, we commit to that. And right after Christmas, usually we, we launch the tree reservation online and that's when you all show up and order your trees and we do that until either we run out of trees or until March early March um, depending on availability of the species 
by the way, this, this event is dictated by mother nature in many ways. We never know what kind of weather is going to hit the nurseries and what trees are going to actually survive and be available. And Gina will touch a little bit more upon that. So it is hit or miss. And sometimes we order trees that are not going to be available um, because nature is unpredictable. We do our best to predict. Uh, but these are the 112 pickup sites. And many of you are familiar with this map because when you ordered your trees, you selected your pickup location. Um, but it's pretty phenomenal that the trees go from the nursery, which you're about to see in a moment from Gina, the nursery in East Tennessee. And we have another supplier, a nursery in Missouri that provides um, a certain number of trees as well. Um, but the trees go from the nursery to the coolers where they are stored in cool storage until we arrive to deliver those to 10 regional hubs across Tennessee. And that's where the pickup site leaders go and pick up their trees and bring them back into the local communities. All that's happening in the next few days, by the way. And that's the infrastructure we set up. And then you, all that are planting trees, go out and pick up your trees at those locations. It's just a way we figured out to get a large number of trees out and make them available for you to plant. So Gina, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Gina is our, uh, a wonderful person to work with knows so much about trees, how to care for them and grow them from seed, uh, make them survive uh, on a mass level. Um, so Gina is with the East Tennessee Nursery, which is owned and operated by the Tennessee Division of Forestry. And go ahead, Gina. Okay, hopefully everybody can see everything. Uh, and I will say that uh, Jeff is being very nice about the logistics of this. They have to coordinate so much. And, and Cynthia has been wonderful because uh, it, it's amazing how the logistical nightmare right here at the end is all just coming together. It's, it's great. Um, but yet we are the East Tennessee nursery. We grow between three and 6 million seedlings each year. And when I say seedlings, some of these trees are gonna be less than a year old when you get them. They're between a year, about nine months and a year old when you, you receive them. We only have one species that we carry that is a two year and that is the white pine. Because um, if you wanted it in the first year, you're not gonna be real happy. It's about an inch tall. So we do carry those for two years. Um, but some of the processes that uh, it's hard to see the background work that went into this. And I, I'm so glad Jeff is doing this. Um, we're very happy with the Tennessee Division of Forestry being a partner with uh, Tennessee Environmental Council, and especially for the special event. It's fantastic to get the public involved. Um, they're fitting a niche that here at the nursery, we can't fill. Um, it is impossible for us to work with the general public on a single or small volume amount of trees, um, particularly when we got like 50 to 70 different species, depending on the year. Uh, they are filling this niche, that's great, because our smallest volume is 25 trees per species. Uh, so um, it's a little more difficult and I'm environmental council is really covering what we can't. So let's go on with uh, some of the pictures here. Uh, here at the East Tennessee nursery, there are only eight people that work here. We got 500 acres and only eight of us and two of us are operating the office trying to do logistics. All the rest are our manpower out the field. So um, I got to give a little kudos to the crew because they are producing mass volumes of, of seedlings. Uh, like I said, we have 500 acres. We have about 84 acres under irrigation. Some of them are under a pivot location, uh, which you can see in the picture here, the kind of semicircle there. Uh, our other fields are also labeled uh, and we rotate these fields around. They're not always all in production. We do try to leave them a little fallow for a while so that they can recover and we can do some rehab on them. Starts The process always starts with seed collection. We do have a few species that we do collect here at the nursery, but we also reach out to contract vendors. Um, and if we have a year like we did this year, contract vendors are now calling me saying, we can't fill your order. Or you ask for 4,500 pounds, I have 300 pounds. So when people start wondering, well, why didn't you just grow more? Part of it is I can't get the seed if the seed's not available. And factors that lead into that are mainly due to mother nature. Some years trees produce real well, they tend to run in a cycle. Um, let's start with white oak. Uh, about every five years, white oak trees produce a massive amount. The in-between years will vary. This year was not a great year. <laughs> but what you can see in this picture is that we sometimes take these trees and we shake them. And then that's been collecting the seeds that have been shaken to the ground. 
Then we add some species, like this is the hybrid chestnut that we do sell. I will say it's one of our more popular species. It is also very labor intensive, as you see. He's wearing le rather leather gloves. It's a brutal, brutal little species to get the nuts out of, but um, they taste great for the wildlife, including humans. We then have to go into stratification, which means we're trying to get that shell that's around that, that nut or that seed to break open just a little bit or stretch out so that when we plant them in the ground, they can germinate better, which means we get a sprout. So this is part of that process. Um, here, we're starting to get into some of our chemical application. What we're doing is we are actually wrapping the field in plastic and we put a fumigation in there that helps us with weed eating. Like we say, back to that part where we only have eight people that work here, um, not enough weeding. If you have a garden of your own, you know it takes a lot of manpower well, multiply it by 84 acres. Uh, it, it becomes difficult to keep up with. So this is part of the process. Um, right now, this is what's going on in the field right now as, as we speak. They are building and sowing the seeds and this is part of the process. Uh, you see that the, we, this is what we call our nutty buddy. He takes some of the larger nuts and we're able to spread them out. Uh, we also have another machine that we actually mix the seed with um, uh, I'm sorry, grits that we eat for breakfast. Nashville loves getting the bill for like, you know, 30 pounds of grits. Now we are not having a huge breakfast. We are actually mixing them with the small seeds so that when they go in the machines, we can spread them out further. Works great. Once we get them in the ground, we then glue them in. Uh, we apply a glue to the top. It's almost like an Elmer's glue. Um, kind of a dirty job, but it helps hold the top of the soil so when it rains, those seeds don't then wash up to the surface or wash out of the beds. Uh, he was talking earlier about, you know, trying to predict what we're going to have. Well, part of the problem was in the beginning, I told you, was with getting seed. Here you see it's kind of like uh, predicting when you put that tomato plant seed in the ground. Tell me at that moment of its life how many tomatoes I'm going to have, what size they're going to be, and what condition they're going to be in. I'm not good at that yet. I'm, I'm still working on trying to get really good at that process, but that's some of the limitations we run into. As we said, we have a couple different ways that we irrigate our fields. And then we go in and we do do some chemical treatment. They get uh, herbicides, insecticides, fungicides. Um, they also get fertilizer. And what you're looking at here are pine trees. And so on our pines, a lot of times we go back and we trim them so that they grow better and they're, they're more aesthetically pleasing by the time you get them. And what you're seeing here is they're doing some of that training, trimming of them. We also go in and trim some of the roots to help the roots grow correctly. We break up some of the alleyways. Tractors running up and down those alleyways, compact that soil. This is helping break that up. Weeding, oh, the crews love it when I start bringing up weeding Wednesdays. Um, and we welcome people to come join us. <laughs> it's a lot of intensive labor and it's usually when it's like 95 degrees. Uh, then we go in and we're doing the process of inventory. This is what you're gonna see when you go to order trees online. And this is what the environmental council is then choosing from at this point to say, yes, yeah, this is what we're expecting to have. And they're starting to look at what they can put their order in for. We have limitations like a germination, moisture, insects to disease, nutrients, weed competition. All these things will affect how that initial inventory goes. Um, sometimes the inventory can change throughout the season. When we start lifting, our inventory may go up or go down because what we predicted may have been underestimating or overestimating. So throughout the year, you may see the online list change in inventory. And this is also when the Environmental Council will stay in contact with me and they will make some adjustments to numbers. Oh, you have more of the popular one that everybody wants. Great, we're gonna increase that. Or, oh God, you didn't get any? <laughs> I'm so sorry, you know, and, and we work these things out and we maybe have to trade out for some other species. So when you see those adjustments, this is where it's coming from. Um, we have crews that come in to help lift these out of the ground. What you're seeing is some of the machinery that we use to go underneath and cut the roots and shake them up out of the ground. That, that machine is wiggling and shaking and getting some of that dirt off so that the, uh, the crews can come in and do some lifting for us. 
Uh, they pack them into these bags and as long as the ground's not frozen and when it snows, it doesn't mean the ground is frozen all the time. So we're still able to get trees sometimes even when it's cold like that. Then when they get in the shed, those bags that you get, you'll see that a lot of them have a little bit of a slurry is what we call it. That's in the bottom of the bag. That's to help keep those roots nice and moist. And that's why when you get them, try to plant them as soon as possible. We don't want those roots uh, having issues. They use strappers and they're strapping them up. These are some of the larger hardwoods that you may be seeing. They're gonna be in smaller bags in these. This is our cooler. As you can see, there's a lot of trees in here. Uh, the first slide with the nice neat, um, all stacked neatly together. The, most of those are our pines and the ones with uh, things sticking out of the ends, that's probably our hardwoods. Um, our seeding sales go on sale September 1st and we stop April 30th. I'll go ahead and say, if you're calling in April, we have very limited um, seedlings left. Um, and the reason why we do delivery, and this is the reason why they're doing this project right now, is these trees need to be planted when they're dormant because they're bare root. Uh, we, once they start breaking dormancy, which is in April normally, um, they, their chances of survival start dropping. So we wanna get these trees in the ground as soon as possible. And that is pretty much my presentation. I will be back to see you again soon, but I'm turning it back over to Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gina. That was great and eye-opening. I always learn something new when I, and I, when I talk to with you. That was great. You know, and I don't know about you all, but I have tried growing seeds from the trees in my yard, and I've yet to figure out how to do that. So I don't know how. However, you do millions of those. I'm very impressed um, every year and with great success. So um, now, and that brought up a really important point because um, before you go to your tree pickup location. I, I wanted to share something with you. And if you are a tree pickup volunteer, a, a tree site, I'm sorry, pickup site leader, as we call them, um, then this is as much for you as anybody, but this is an, one of the most important lessons I'm gonna share with you on this webinar. And this goes for every tree day event. Uh, and I, so I made a short video to demonstrate what I'm about to talk about here. So um, just take, it, uh, take a moment to listen to me on video. Action. All right, so one of the most important things about Tennessee Tree Day is that we take good care of these trees because they've had a long journey from the nursery in East Tennessee to the coolers, to the hubs, and into your community. So um, there's a lot of passing of hands going along there, uh, passing these trees from one hand to the next. So we've got to take really good care of them so that they, when they get into the ground at your house or your property where you're planting, they'll survive and they'll grow up and be big trees for many generations. So that's our goal. In order to do that, this is one of the most common problems we see at the pickup sites or even when people are planting up at their properties is the roots are like left wide open like this. This is a no-no, this is bad news right here because, um, and I'm going to do this for demonstration for just a few seconds here. These roots are bare, they belong in the soil and if they're left exposed and they dry to any degree, they will, the trees will die instantly. Uh, so we don't want that to happen. So always, like I'm gonna show you, always keep these um, protected by rolling them up in their bags from the nursery. And if you are, um, and if you uh, are bringing your own bags from home, uh, just make sure the first thing you do when you get your trees at pickup sites is um, dump them in some water and then put them in your bags and wrap the roots up and label them with the correct species so you know what you're taking home. I'll demonstrate that real quick. Um, it just is laying out like... And actually, I, I have this little cool, I think a cool demonstration right here. Can you all see me? Um, Gina, give me a thumbs up if you can see me on full screen right now because... No, oh yeah, because I'm on screen share. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop screen share right now and, and just um, demonstrate something because I have a special guest here with me today in my house where we're doing from where I'm broadcasting from. Um, and it is some of those uh, seedlings that Gina was showing us that Gina helped grow with her crew there. This is, um, uh, I have a five gallon bucket here in my living room. And these are some uh, red buds, five red buds that uh, were grown in the East Tennessee nursery. And you can see the bare roots here. Um, make sure that you can see these. Um, and when we're uh, and when we're moving them from bag to person and back into a new bag, we 
always put them in water first. And then when you're picking up your trees from the site leaders and from your pickup location, bring enough plastic bags, one for each species, um, grocery bags and pharmacy bags, whatever, they're, they're great. And, uh, or I, these are my compostable um, kitchen trash bags. So um, most of the trees, the roots are gonna be, um, a bag the size of grocery bag is gonna be big enough and you just grab your, um, your, your bag and you put your roots in there um, and wrap up those roots. And like Gina said, you don't wanna hold the roots with your hand because that uh, increases their temperature and that will um, not be good for the trees either. So, and then you can bring a rubber band to sort of put it around above the roots or what's the, one of the best things to use is a masking tape and just wrap it around there. And then you can write right on that tape, write the name of the species so that when you get home, you don't forget what those were. And um, there is a twig guide on our website as well if you do forget what, what it is, it will help you remember, identify what you're planting where. Uh, so I'm gonna take these back out. And then when you get them home, put them in a bucket of water before while they're waiting to be planted or just leave them wrapped on the ground, um, leave the roots wrapped. So there's some basics about, oh, by one, one of the greatest labeling tools is the Sharpie. So you might wanna bring one of those too, but that's just a quick overview on taking care of the roots so these trees will survive until they're in the ground at your location of preference. So I'm gonna go back to screen share and jump back into this presentation. There's a few more slides and then we're gonna um, learn more from Gina about, um, about more about the trees and how to care for them in the long term. So when you go out to your, um, go out to pick up your trees, and when you ordered your trees, you got all the information. You chose where you're going to pick them up. So make sure you have that, um, that email response from us of where you're picking up your trees. We have this map on our website, too, that all, where all the pickup locations are across Tennessee. But you will see the sign says pick up your trees here if your site leader has put those out. Um, and bring the plastic bags, one per species, that you ordered. Um, some people only ordered one tree, one seedling of one species, so it's easy to remember, but some of you ordered lots, so um, make sure you bring one bag for each species you order. It's good to bring some kind of newspaper or paper towel that you can wrap, moisten the newspaper and the paper towel, wrap your roots in that before you put them in the plastic bag. It just helps maintain that moisture longer and make sure you plant them as soon as possible after that. Bring some tags like the masking tape that you can write on or, or label right on the bag or right, right on the bag. Uh, bring your mask because um, we still are in a pandemic and we want everyone to be safe. So bring a mask, keep your social distance while you're waiting to get your trees. And your smartphone or a printed out um, copy of your order form, bring, bring it on your phone or, or as a piece of paper. Either Mom. way, this, it'll help your pickup site leader verify your trees that you're picking up. But they do all have the list of who got how many. Uh, you, by the way, you all um, pickup site leaders will get those lists by Monday of who's picking up what from your location. Uh, so just a couple of things. Remember that uh, the pickup site leaders are volunteers, the people planting trees. You are volunteers. We're all volunteers here. I mean, we're paid staff. We raise the money, do the work. So we, we sort of like our volunteers as well. Um, but um, just be kind, be nice, be safe, have fun. And again, thank you for participating. So I just want to say we love our volunteers. We could not do this without each and every one of you. So thank you so much. Well said, thank you, Cynthia. Um, some locations will have your trees pre-bundled, so all you have to go is say, say your name and they'll hand you your package of trees. So it's a good idea to check, make sure you got the right ones before you walk away, uh, and leave the pickup location. COVID-19, of course, we all know the protocols. Even though some local areas are changing, uh, lightening the restrictions, we still want you, encourage you, invite you I would like for you to wear a mask and keep the distance. If there are people in front of you, just either stay in your car or um, stay a good 10 feet away from the next people in line. Um, but in most locations, there's not gonna be a whole lot of folks um, picking up at each location. And if you have a, a, a temperature, if you have a fever the day of, 
um, I would say, please stay home and have someone else go pick up your trees. So Gina is gonna to talk to you. Um, well, actually, so we have a short video that's how to plant your tree that um, our field manager, Jordan Young, um, stars in this video. And then Gina will talk to you more about the long-term care of them. So I'm gonna cut back to um, this video, uh, but I need to continue sharing my screen. This is a video we produced not too long ago, and we actually planted a seedling in my neighbor's yard who wanted a tree. There's a northern red oak. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut over to that video now. This is just a three minute, a two minute video, so it'll go fast. Today we're going to show you how to plant a bare root seedling for Tennessee Tree Day. The trees that you get for Tree Day are bare root seedlings, which means the, seed, the roots are exposed. So it is vital that you keep the roots wrapped and moist at all times. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap these roots and place it in water until I get my hole dug. When choosing the location to plant your tree, it's important to consider how big your tree will get. Today we're planting a northern red oak, which will get up to 75 feet tall and 45 feet wide. So it's important that we plant it away from power lines. Now we're ready to dig a hole. The hole should be at least as wide as a dinner plate and deep enough to cover all the roots, about a foot deep. What I'm doing right now is removing the soil from the grass before I place it back into the hole. Now we're gonna put the tree into the ground. This is the root ball and it's important to plant the root ball level with the ground. Now just fill in the hole with the dirt you removed. Gently tamp the soil down. Now we're gonna spread some mulch around the tree in a donut shape to prevent weed growth and retain moisture. We don't want our mulch piled up against the trunk because it can cause rot. Now we're gonna thoroughly water our tree. Now we're going to place this tubing around the trunk of our tree to help protect against weed eaters and lawnmowers. They're one of the biggest hazards to newly planted trees. And we're done. Tennessee Tree Day is brought to you by Tennessee Environmental Council in partnership with Tennessee Division of Forestry, the East Tennessee Nursery, and these partners and sponsoring agencies. And of course, you, our volunteer participants. Together, we are planting more than 50,000 native trees across Tennessee this year alone. There we go. Hey, thank you, Jordan, even though you're not, maybe you are after watching. Um, so Gina, would you like to go ahead and share your screen and, and show us a few more slides about the tree care? Absolutely. Nope, that's not the one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try that again. Oh, come on. Okay, well, wanted, there's Edison. Can I mention something? Um, we got some advice from Deanna Webb with the Division of Forestry. She said to make sure if you're using those black colanders to make sure you push them down in the ground so that the wind doesn't push them around. So. And I would add to that to say slice them down in that picture. You saw how it sliced down that so the tree never becomes entrapped in it. Should we forget to go back and check it a few years later? <laughs> and that happens by accident. Okay. <laughs> I can see this on my screen. It's not coming out on yours. Well, okay. we can see the, the Department of Ag Forestry planting a bare root seedling slide. If that's oh, you. okay. That slide is showing. Okay. Yep. All right, it decided to switch monitors. I do love that. <laughs> okay, I am actually filling in on this part, um, but um, I thank Jeff for letting me definitely cover this important section of bare, um, planting a bare root seedling. And that video covered so much of what we're gonna cover here. So a lot of these slides you're gonna see, I'm gonna run through a little faster. And big thing is, is our big slogan here is right tree, right place. Um, Underneath the power line is not the place to put a nice, beautiful white oak because you're going to end up by having to trim it and all those little, you know, ones that have had those tops trimmed, 
trees really don't like that. So we want to make sure we're putting the right tree in the right place. Okay. Um, like they say, dig the hole, make sure the hole is straight enough. The biggest factor we have is making sure that it's in the right place. You're leaving enough room for it to expand and grow. Um, oak trees do not need to be planted three feet apart. They need to be much further. I wouldn't start anything less than 12 feet apart. And that's at a minimum. If you want it to be a nice, good looking yard tree, you're looking at 20, 25 feet apart. So consider these things when you're making your choices. Uh, when we're digging the hole, we want to make sure it's wide enough that we can actually get some of these hardwood seedlings, particularly the hardwoods. The pines are a little easier to plant. But these starters make sure those roots are getting a chance to spread out a little bit. And um, place your tree in the hole, making sure that the, um, he's got them in different order, sorry, uh, you, that you have enough room that at the top you're able to put some mulch in and that you can put down some barrier. Because if you can keep that, that competition away from those trees, the better success that tree has in making it for a long, long life, which is what we all want. Um, some trees require shade, some want full sunlight. Make sure that you've looked into what your tree really needs to be able to grow and be successful. All right, is this not going forward? Okay, it is. Some of these, I'm sorry, I'm skipping through because uh, Jeff has done such a good job on those videos. As you can see, some of these, when they were packed, look at the number three, you see an air pocket around those roots. That's why you see screen, uh, the picture number four there where they're going back in and they're pushing a little more dirt in. You wanna make sure that there's no air pockets there. This video, these pictures here apply more to when you're doing the pines, it works better. The previous pictures were showing more of hardwoods where you're looking a little more labor intensive handwork, but make sure when you're packing the dirt back in around those roots that you're keeping the roots straight and that you are getting no air pockets left behind. All right, and as you see, we're looking here at this picture, there is a root collar. That's what we refer to it as. It's kind of where the roots end and the trunk begins. Some, this species here that they're looking at, it's pretty clear right where that line is. Some other species are not quite as clear. You'll, you gotta look for a little change in the color and texture will change a little bit uh, at that point in the uh, where the root collar is. That's where the dirt goes to. Be very careful about pushing up too much mulch above that line because you can cause rot underneath that uh, bark. So we don't want that to happen either. So um, this is a good illustration of trees that were pulled up that had been pro improperly planted. They were what we call um, J-rooted or L-rooted. Um, those bottom roots didn't get a chance to grow straight down. And what they'll do is they'll grow out to the side like these are, or they'll wrap around each around themselves, actually choking themselves out as they grow and get larger. So make sure those roots are going down. Usually what I do is if I'm planting a tree, slightly, you know, buried a little, you know, just a quarter inch lower than what it should be and slightly pull up on it gently uh, before being completely done planting it. That way you know that the bottom roots had a chance to stretch out a little bit. Okay, you wanna make sure that you haven't packed it in so tight that that tree can't move, you know, that the roots are just uh, strangled or, or that, that you tore them by, you know, stomping them in too hard. You're actually gonna probably rip some of those fragile roots. So we wanna make sure that doesn't happen either. But I have plenty of room, no air pockets. Um, water it as soon as possible because that tree has just gone through its most traumatic event in its entire life. Um, that transport movement planting, very tough on these little trees. So we wanna make it as easy as possible. Give them a drink of water after they make it in the ground. Um, you know, Try to shelter them from any weeds coming up th this first year, pull those weeds out from around it and maybe it a little bit. It'll have a lot higher chance of survival. And part of that babying, as you saw with the black drainage pipes, are a cheap way to do it. Um, like Cynthia said, bury them down slightly in the ground. They don't blow around and the weed eater can't get under them. Weed eaters are detrimental to these little guys. Because um, when you plant them and turn around in a circle, they're going to disappear. I highly recommend if you want to be able to keep track of your tree and you haven't done mulch work around it, get some flagging. Put a flag next to it. Um, one of those little, little metal flags, you know, just a little thing on the top. It's great to be able to look across the field because what you're gonna see is little flags, you're never gonna see your trees. 
not that first year. A lot of them are going to be too small, but it'll help you keep track of them. And doing the mulch work, make sure it's not up too high. Cicadas, um, they're going to be out this year. Uh, at least that's the prediction that we may have some issues with them. They're going to want those trees. So if you find that you're starting to see them, you may want to get some of this netting or something to put around them if you start uh, noticing that they're uh, enjoying your trees as much as you did. Uh, but uh, don't kill them. Um, this is again, right tree, right place, making sure that we don't allow vines to climb up them. Uh, and that's the biggest thing is protecting these trees at this very fragile point of its little life. And you guys are taking all the steps. I love the, you know, be careful how you're transporting them when you bring them out to a site, making sure that, uh, like Jeff said, keep them covered. Um, and don't leave them out, don't leave the bag out in direct sunlight. If you, you know, have another shade tree there, while you're planting a couple of the trees, leave the rest of them rolled up, secure, maybe underneath a shade tree so they're not sitting there baking in the sun. But that was the main thing. And I appreciate everybody out there for all your help uh, making this a successful program. And a big kudos to the Environmental Council. Okay, Jeff, I'm going to turn yeah. it back to you. Thank you, Gina. That was great. Um, a great overview on planting, caring for. Uh, we're going to open it up for questions just momentarily here. I'm going to wrap up the presentation. Um, but again, we do this because we care about our planet. We care about our environment and our communities and our families. And it's a lot of fun to do this, uh, these activities with families. And in my case, the volunteers and our staff. So, um, but yeah, trees benefit us in many ways by absorbing carbon, by providing oxygen, a lot of oxygen. That's where we, that's how we can survive on the planet. So um, we're doing good for everybody when we plant trees, reducing flooding, cleaning up the air and the water, reducing the heat island effect in communities, healthier communities. And it's a lot of fun to get out there and do something positive in the environment. We've planted with volunteers over 679,000 trees since 2007. We're gonna to top 700,000 this year with Tree Day and about 80% of those trees have survived. You know, trees have been planted in all 95 counties. We've had about somewhere like 45 or 50,000 volunteers so far. And we have about 10,000 this year that are um, participating. Uh, in volunteers and we will send up we will send out follow-up surveys in the following years just so you can tell us how your trees are doing and we want you to send us a tree selfie so take a selfie when you're planting take some pictures while you're planting the before after send it to us post it on the facebook group tennessee tree day and there's probably a tennessee tree day 21 uh, 2021 group as well but post your selfies. We want to see them. That's part of the fun of it is just seeing all the people planting trees on tree day, which is just a few days away. Um, and then, and as you can see, the gentleman in here took us, uh, sent us a picture about a year after he planted that tulip poplar and look at it. These do grow fast. They will, it might seem a little small when you first get them, but uh, get them in the ground. You will see growth instantly this spring and throughout the summer, especially if you're taking care of them and they will grow significantly very fast. So uh, send us your pictures. And by the way, I do wanna say thank you for donating when you ordered your trees because that keeps us this operation afloat. And in fact, because we did receive enough donations this year, we were able to, we had originally had 50,000 trees on order, but we were in, able to increase that to about 60,000 because the donations were coming in. So the more donations that come in, the more trees we plant, simple as that. Uh, we do have some other programs that I want to just give a shout out to our pollinator program where you can plant a flower garden, a butterfly garden to generate some buzz. You can sign up to start composting your food waste and turning it into soil in your backyard through a, a natural process called composting. Uh, recycle Right, which we uh, offer tips on how to recycle properly and what you can and cannot recycle here in, in your communities in Tennessee. So you can learn about all this, plus all the ins and outs about the trees you ordered on our website, tectn.org. Uh, and you can see the web, like, web links there, tectn.org is the main one. And you can get to all those programs right there. You can sign up. It doesn't cost anything to sign up for these programs. But when you start ordering supplies, we do ask for the donations to help us cover those costs. There's one more way that you can support our work. And this is a, a way that once you sign up your Kroger Community Rewards Card with TEC, 
Um, if you do shop at Kroger and have the, re the Kroger rewards card, every time you shop, we get points and we'll get a, um, we get a donation in the mail from Kroger because you've selected Tennessee Environmental Council as your community partner. And you would, um, the directions to that are on our website. You will see that in future emails. When you registered for Tree Day, there's the instructions on how to do that were in the email confirmation received. So um, many ways to find out how to do that, but it's really simple. You go to the Kroger Rewards community, or community rewards on the web, and then you log into your account and you just choose Tennessee Environmental Council to receive your points, your nonprofit partner points, that is. You still get your points for cheaper gas and uh, discounts and stuff, um, but we, we, we get help as well. So thank you for considering that. So we'll go ahead and open it to q and I'll stop my screen share. Most important, I wanna say thank you for participating because this event, it happens because people wanna plant trees and show up and do it and, and sign up and, and do that. So um, you can see all the parts that are involved in making it happen. Um, but let's see, we'll go ahead and do some Q&A. So I need to jump over to my email. Hold on one second while I, I find the first question to answer here. We have several. It's in the chat, Jeff. Oh, okay. I could, I could say, um, here's one for Gina. Um, how does the use of all the chemicals affect the local environment in the nurseries? We are strict. Uh, we have a very strict protocol about following the labels. Uh, number one, they are not used for anything that is not for their correct purpose and the correct volumes are used. Um, we're, we're monitored pretty closely about that. Um, yes, yeah, some of the chemicals are, you know, um, are, are, we would love not to have to use them. Um, I will admit that. But in order to produce the volume of trees that we do, this is the only way to do it and make it economical. Otherwise, we're going to have to sell trees at $30, $40 like the big boxes do. I did post our, someone asked about our website. I did put it there in the chat and we'll post it on our Facebook group as well. Um, but yeah, please visit our website. So I'll just roll up some of the questions here and thank you for your positive feedback there, Catherine. Um, I appreciate that. And yes, we are excited to get those trees to you as well. It's happened. We're actually, um, that video I shot was in my backyard and we're gonna be loading them into vans today and Monday and delivering them out to the hubs. So it's, it's on, game on here. Um, I do see one question here about root stimulator or food plant when planting. Um, it's not really necessary, uh, but I will say that it can help stimulate. You want to make sure that you're not overdosing these trees, though, because that can also cause harm. Uh, if you have a rich soil, um, I probably wouldn't bother. You know, save your money and, and baby it in other ways by keeping the competition of uh, vegetation away from it and keeping the deer population from rubbing on it. Mm -hmm. um, those are gonna be more important than actually feeding it food if you've got decent soil. If you have soil that you know is a little lacking in some nutrients, um, it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit on it. Just be careful not to overdose the trees, follow the labels. And that will add to that. That's another reason why we offer native trees because, because they're the heritage trees of our state. But they also, once you put them in the ground, they know what to do, they, uh, they'll survive with very little care. We want you to care for them and water them immediately. Um, but um, we get enough rain that I just want to make sure when it's really hot and dry for extended periods, you might want to, we do recommend putting water uh, on the trees again. Um, but for the most part, they do know how to survive the weather of Tennessee. Um, very little, very little care is needed. The more you care for them, the better they'll thrive. Um, but that's one reason we choose native trees because um, because of the maintenance is very low or minimal on that. There was a question about do any of the species we offer, this is probably better for you, Gina, um, because there's a technique of planting a tree where you dig the hole and then you put a mound of dirt in the middle, a mound of soil, and then you put you sort of spread the roots around that mound. Are there any of the species we're offering that that technique is required? None, none that I would say are required. Um, will it, would it help some species that particularly have a very dense uh, matting uh, type of root system? Yeah, that probably can help. 
most of the species, like uh, if you plant, let's say bald cypress, that thing looks like a carrot. Um, you, you're not going to want to do something like that for that species. But now if you do, um, I don't know if you guys sold it or not, but um, nine bark or silky dogwood, those are very hair mat type root systems. And, and that method would be very good if you have the time um, to do that for a, a low number of species, I go for it, It'd be great. <laughs> I do want to add that the video, this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. So just Google Tennessee Environmental Council and look, uh, look at our YouTube channel. It'll be up there. We, we should have it posted this afternoon. Um, if you could spread the word and tell your networks, uh, your friends and family to watch the video as well. We're, uh, the webinar, we will post the how to plant with Jordan as a separate video as well. And we will remind you um, We'll remind you to watch those videos uh, between now and tree planting day. I see another question here that had uh, using bag soil for your tree. Um, I, I have mixed emotions about that only because if you need a little bit more soil to finish uh, filling out, filling in the hole, because you know for some reason you can take the soil out, but when you put it back, there's never as much. If you're doing that to fill it in a little more, I don't see a problem. But for the most part, like Jeff said, these are native species. They know how to make it in this soil really well. Um, and root systems kind of want to stay wherever the nutrients are. I don't particularly care for sometimes filling the whole hole with bag soil. It's great, but you really want those root systems to head out. So um, keep that in mind when you're doing this. There's a question about uh, someone saying they had trouble finding a location in Williamson County. We did have uh, at least two or three locations in Williamson County. Again, all those locations are on our website. Uh, on the Tennessee Tree Day web page. Um, so they are there, but it is closed now. It's too late to register for trees for this event, but stay tuned on our website because we will be offering some other opportunities in the coming weeks after this big event is over um, before the tree planting season closes for this year. So uh, we, we will be offering some other opportunities. Just pay attention and, and um, we'll do our best to allow more people to plant more trees. Um, um, I saw the other question there about protecting your young trees from deer. Um, if you only have a few trees that you're trying to protect and you're not looking like uh, doing a plantation, you may want to put uh, some stakes around it and put some of the netting around it uh, just to help keep them away for a little while till that tree gets up a little higher. Uh, it is a difficult situation though. Uh, I, I have one more comment before we sign off. I, I think we got through most of the questions that I could see. But I do want to thank the Tennessee General Assembly as well because um, they, the House, um, the State House, um, recently voted unanimously on a joint resolution declaring March 20th as Tennessee Tree Day 2021, and that is moving on to the Tennessee Senate, uh, where it will be, and then it will be signed by the governor. So uh, we do appreciate the support we get from all walks of life in Tennessee. Thank you for participating. Um, with that, we'll conclude this webinar. Make sure you share it, watch it again. If you want the more information, it'll be on our YouTube page and uh, you can always watch on our Facebook, our Facebook group, our Facebook page as well. Thank you all and thank for participating. Have fun, be safe, be kind and enjoy the process. <laughs>